so I'll just I'll just play it. It's made by um, AMTV, a fellow called Green. What's his surname? Um, Green Wave. Um, uh, Christopher Green, and uh, he's a independent journalist out of Arizona. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to play the uh, play the uh, soundtrack to the video, and here it comes. Hey everybody, I'm Christopher Green. You're tuning in to AMTV, Alternative Media Television. It is, of course, October 7, 2013. I wanted to give a brief but vigorous shout-out, enthusiastic shout-out to Truckers for the Constitution and their plan to slow D.C. Beltway traffic and actively arrest congressmen committing treason against the United States Constitution. Again, let me repeat that. Truckers for the Constitution plan to slow D.C. Beltway traffic and arrest congressmen that have committed treason against the Constitution. Uh, you can see an image here. Truck drivers slow down traffic on the highway on October 18, 2010 in France, where there was a similar protest held. Uh, tractor trailer drivers will intentionally clog the inner loop of the Washington, D.C. Beltway beginning on the morning of October 11th, which is a Friday, according to a coordinator of the upcoming Truckers Ride for the Constitution rally. Uh, so this occurs this Friday on October 11th. I've had several emails sent to me personally uh, asking me to get the word out uh, to help raise awareness uh, for this very public protest because the truckers are pissed off in this country. One of the main grievances that they cite are uh, the United States, uh, the President, Barack Obama, as well as congressmen that have supported the active army of Syrian rebels to overthrow the Bashar al-Assad government. Uh, they've cited that as an act of treason. Uh, they have cited anyone uh, in Congress or anyone in government uh, to support that, uh, to be a traitor, and they're citing this for reasons and a reason for the arrest. Uh, help us get this out. Help us make this heavily shared uh, throughout the blogosphere. Uh, Conlin, one of the organizers of the event, says Obama committed treason by allegedly funneling weapons to al-Qaeda-linked rebels in Syria. Members of Congress who support arming Syrian rebels, he said, are accessories to the alleged crime. He identified House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi, California, uh, Senator Dianne Feinstein of California as politicians he will seek to arrest for alleged acts against the Constitution. Uh, Andrews has said that they've had 3,000 truckers RSVP. Uh, they've now lost count of how many truckers uh, and are attending the event in public public protests, along with hundreds of emails a day that they can barely keep up with. Now, there is a Facebook page with almost 50,000 likes. Uh, their original Facebook page was censored and taken down. I don't know if it was Facebook that took it down or uh, pressure from the government, uh, but please like this page, share this page, uh, share this video uh, with everyone you can. Uh, please make it viral. Uh, support our truckers, uh, support the Constitution, support America. And you know what? Americans in Washington in general need to be concerned. The president needs to be concerned. Uh, I've read statistics that say that if our truckers stopped delivering uh, necessary items like food to grocery stores, it would take about two days. That's two days before uh, the store would run out uh, and people wouldn't be able to eat. Uh, they wouldn't be able to go buy bottled water uh, in everyday necessities. That's how quickly and how dependent uh, we are on the trucking industry and on these truckers that are very obviously angry, some of which are calling for the impeachment of President Barack Obama and are actively seeking to arrest congressmen in Washington, D.C. on October 11th, this coming Friday in 2013. Please get this out everywhere. I'm Christopher Green, hard-hitting and in-your-face. Make this video viral. Dun, dun, dun. The viral video from Arizona. Guys, uh, my guest tonight, uh, 
uh, two gentlemen um, who uh, have contributed in various ways to the Journeys Project. And um, so I'd like to welcome on to tonight's show Jay Larson and Dave Kelso. Um, good evening, Jay. Uh, good evening, JP. Good evening, Dave. Good evening, Sean Connery. How are you doing? You've been quite the topic of chat conversation. Have I really? Well, I missed it yes, all, and yeah. I can't get it back on 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 the on the <laughs> sort of thing. So, um, luckily, it was everybody's own. Um, <laughs> it, it was it, it was all your own joy. I I, I won't be able to uh, indulge in that anyway. <laughs> Uh, and, and, and my friend Michelle is also um, listening. She's on Nutable Spirit Radio and all of this and the whole, you know, internet radio scene, I guess. I guess you could say. I'm sure she's just digging your accent right now, so why don't you give a shout out to <laughs> Michelle? All right, all right, Mr. Connery, go ahead. Oh, well, actually, I have to say that I, uh, Mr. Connery is, in fact, a Scotsman. And uh, I'm not a Scotsman. Uh, I live in Scotland. Um, he has got that uh, nice little uh, accent when he, uh, he uh, it's, uh, it's it's due to as a contraction in the throat. Every British accent is various contractions in different parts of the head. Um, a lot of it is is tension at the back of the mouth. But uh, uh, he's got this delightful little lisp uh, when he speaks. So anyway, um, meanwhile, uh, so uh, a big shout out to. Uh, to uh, Rochelle there in the, in the Wall Street chat room. Um, here we are. We're uh, we're talking about some serious <laughs> stuff here, guys. Um, and uh, uh, and uh, brothers and sisters uh, all over the uh, the blue green <coughs> planet that we're spinning around on the surface of. Um, I actually have a, a tiny creature in my room. I talk about these fellows all the time. Uh, from from uh, June till about mid October, uh, they exist, the midges, and they um, they just exist to annoy you. And uh, for many many months, I've been very vegan about them and not 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 tried to kill any. But uh, a little creature in your room. I didn't know you invited Henry Kissinger over. Ah. Well, <laughs> we an annoying little creature, you know. We all know about Henry and his clones. <laughs> um, so, so where do we start? Um, let's let's. Uh, who, uh, well, I mean, Dave, you posted the video this morning, and uh, yeah, Jay actually brought it to my attention. So, um, uh, I think I'll let Jay start off with um, his perspective because you know him and I were talking about it before the show and there was a bunch of things he was saying about it so I talk too much all the time anyway so this gives me an opportunity to shut the hell up and let someone else do the talking for a change so take it away Jay oh uh, well I, I go around on Facebook uh, I use it much like a newspaper to get the basic news because your regular uh, media doesn't cover the real news um, but I, I take everything with uh, basically a grain of salt. It's just data. And the more data you have where certain things seem to connect, uh, the more accurate it probably is. Um, but um, on this one, it, a lot of it is more of a let's see what happens type of thing. Um, you know, it could be, it could be people just uh, trying to bring, bring up certain attentions that Congress hasn't been acting or behaving very well, and they're going to put an end to it. Now, uh, this can be done just by creating a, vid a video. It doesn't mean they have to actually do anything besides that. If uh, uh, the Congress gets a hold of it, they, they might start straightening their hind end up and start voting the people's choice instead of uh, making making money from this corporatism <coughs> that usually supports them in their re-election, they can uh, start supporting the citizens that, that have been voted in them in to basically do the will of the people. Uh, so uh, person, personally, I, I, I keep it at... Uh, um, Basically, I give it a chance of happening, uh, 
uh, one to one. It it may happen that way. It may not. Uh, but we do definitely know that people are these truckers are ticked off, and we know that they're going to be in Washington in a few days. Uh, they could do anything from just parking their vehicle on all the on the Beltway and you know practically seal the city off to uh, to opening up the national parks and national monuments that have been closed the last few days because of government shutdown. So it's it's an op open event. Uh, we in the last. Uh, Hour and a half, we've been trying to get a hold of this Christopher Green, and we left messages. Uh, we haven't got a call back yet, but I noticed that he's ha he has uh, that Greenway uh, radio show tomorrow night. I, I don't know the exact time, but it might be worth listening to that that show. Um, they may impart a little bit more information. Either way. What would you say about that, Dave? <clears throat> well, I'd say you make some very good points. I mean, you know, like, on one point, obviously, I, I personally would, you know, love it if, like, you know, 500,000 frickin' truckers just kind of peacefully stormed in and, you know, just made it their, you know, citizens' arrests and... um you know, the police, you know, at that point had better either be on board or get out of their way. Um, and I see no reason why that sort of thing <clears throat> couldn't be done, you know, completely peacefully. I mean, I don't see why it would have to resort to, you know, violence or anything else. I think it could all be, you know, a very peaceful process and, you know, drag these people into, you know, a, a court or whatever and, you know, proceed from there and start to reign this corrupt government in um on the other hand you know it's like i try to be as objective as i can possibly be and i definitely see a a possibility here that i that i definitely can't deny that you know how the the elites always love to play their little silly games with us and their false flags and their psychological warfare and you know, misdirect us, and they, they laugh as we're their channel, and they can push, and they can prod, and, you know, we jump when they say jump. Well, they, somebody out there might be trying to start a precedent to where, um, you know, it, it gets proven that, that, you know, we could do the same thing, that all, all we have to do is make a profound enough statement and put out a bit yeah, get them jump when you know when when we say jump and get them nervous and kind of like you know turn about a spare play and payback's a bitch. So even if it's it's not going to be a literal arrest, it might set a precedent for you know pretty much everybody. Just open season on minds growing the Illuminati basically. So you know, everybody will start bombarding the elites with their own you know little um you know, little little mind games and maybe we'll we'll dish them back what um they've been dishing out to us. So so maybe there is not gonna be any physical arrest. Maybe the the truck will just go through and the truckers will be like Nelson sitting there on the Simpsons going, Ha <laughs> ha suckers and that'll set a precedent for everybody to just you know, start start screwing with them and maybe they'll end up all resigning out of just pure like, you know, uh, post-traumatic freaking stress disorder because everyone's constantly shooting all this, you know, disinfo their way. Not disinfo to misdirect the people, but, you know, to, to put the elites on edge, you know, turn about a spare play. But then again, it could be actual arrests. I mean, I I have to look at all these these possibilities objectively. Um, I personally don't don't care which happens. I mean, whether whether they actually drag them out and arrest them, or whether we psychologically warfare them into resigning, or you know whatever the case is, I mean, I don't really care. I'm not you know biased for or against any particular methods as long as you know the people are are developing 
methods to where we're not just sitting there expecting our selected mish leaders to, you know, do everything for us. And as adulthood becomes a state of extended adolescence, and that, you know, people are actually using discernment and critical thinking and their imagination and creativity and starting to swing this holographic illusion of so-called physical reality more into the direction of sovereignty. So whatever way we, you know, we can get more and more there, you know, to, to that point, I mean, I'm all for it. And anything that can that can be done peacefully and nonviolently, I'm all for it. Because they don't know how to handle nonviolent no, if you're violent, they know exactly what to do with you. But if you can handle this through intelligence and through strategy and through psychology, then, you know, rather than, you know, totally open violence, because they'd love nothing more than a bloody civil war or revolution or whatever. That it gives them an excuse to get out all their toys and, and, you know, confound and confuse everybody and send everybody packing against each other. But if we can do everything calmly, then that'd be great. I'd also like to recommend a video by, um, there's a channel called uh, Storm Clouds Gathering, or was it Rising? I'm pretty sure it's Gathering. Uh, the title of the video, I think, is um, uh, Revolution, an Instruction Manual or an Instruction Guide or something, or something like that. Um, anyway, um, the person... Does have a very efficient, packed way in a short video just explains the whole consciousness revolution and how that can be practically applied to this, you know, 3D left brain reality and in such a way that doesn't result in this, you know, yeah. violent death. That well, this is this is this is the entire nub of it. You know, uh, the revolution isn't a bunch of people with weapons. We're we're way beyond that. The revolution is internal, and people might not even notice it if they didn't know what to look for. Um, and the revolution is, <laughs> is not being televised, but people are uploading it to the YouTube. <laughs> uh, and actually, you know, many years ago, we used to do this. Uh, I used to do a jam session. I used to come up with, the, with these sort of little raps and stuff like that. But... Uh, you know, based on the Gil Scott Heron thing, uh, the revolution will not be televised. Uh, as we're seeing, you know, it is not being televised yet. I, I, and I said, that a real, I, think I must have said it about 2002, I said that the revolution won't be televised, it will be uploaded to YouTube. I didn't realize that by then people would have telephones <laughs> actually uh, directly send uh, information straight into YouTube uh, from their hands. So, uh, you know, more than televised it will be seen by a million eyes through a million eyes so it's really it's a and what has to happen first is a revolution of consciousness because as you say uh, this this holographic projection that we find ourselves existing in um, we have it's like asking a goldfish you know um, how's the water <laughs> It's like, well, yeah, well, what's water? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, what's the water stuff you're talking about? I exactly. You know, that. what's the difference? What, what's air? You know, but so the thing is, is that it, we have to get beyond the point of um, thinking that the government is here to do anything but slow us down and control us. And, you know, then we get to the real. You know, what happens after the revolution? Do we have more of the same? Yeah. Do we have something that is imposed on us that is worse than the same? Or do we throw away all the same old stuff and start actually working with systems that are organic and follow the laws of nature? And what I yeah, mean by that is... That's the thing I says. Well, the yeah. video and book... He actually goes. He addresses exactly what what you just said, and he has some very good answers to those. Who's that? Um, Storm clouds gathering. That one um, revolution um, handbook guy. Oh, oh, let me just let me just see if I can find this real quick, and I'll toss the link into the chat room. That okay, good probably... idea. Can, uh, yeah, and I'll um, put I'll put them into Rev Radio and to uh, to Wolf Spirit Radio's chat. 
as well. Actually, you could do the you could do the chat as well. Um, so well, I'm the spirit chat. You can put it in the other one. Okay, it, it's so it's the uh, you know it's the revolution of consciousness and the revolution of mind, understanding the nature of who we are and what we are uh, and what we're actually working with. You know, we're not working against terrorists. We're working against the corporation. You know, the war. The people are not your enemy. The corporation. It's let's not say it's our enemy. Let's say it's our predator. You know, we just want to not be eaten. Um, you know, I got an even better one. Corporations are just tools, and there's people that are are running these tools. So I mean, th you know, think of it like like fire. Fire's neither good nor evil. You can you know you can you know cook your food with it, or you know you can burn the crap out of yourself with it. So when we allow corporations to become too big and out of control and running our lives, and it's like you know the the forest fire, not 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 the little, little burner on the stove that's that's you know cooking up your hard boiled eggs or whatever, you know. So we the people need to realize that we have allowed these things to you know get out of hand because you know the educational system which literally is based on neo nazism by the way people can look that one up but um basically it it narrows our minds so that we don't see the obvious hiding in plain sight i mean cuz everything is admitted out in the open i mean hell even look at the word governmental governmental mind control and it translates the exact same in latin too well yeah a governor is a little device that you have on an engine that stops it um over running over over spinning so uh it it's there to put a cap on things to slow things down if they expand too much because the government doesn't want the people's consciousness to expand too much just enough so that they can operate the machines but not so much that they, that they realize that uh, hang on, there's only ten of them and like two million of us. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, that, that kind of, well, it's, it's actually, it's a in much more enormous proportion than that. And Oh, yeah, I and, did a video on that one, by the way. Yeah, yeah, I've seen that little yeah. dot one, that's very good. There, there's a lot more, a lot more to realize about the whole situation, because we're thinking, you know, it's the government and we need a government. And <laughs> and here's another one. Do we elect a government? You know, that's a joke. That's the biggest joke. You know, that's the biggest joke yeah. of the twenty first century. I don't think yeah. there's been a real election for well, in this no century kidding. really. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, as a matter of fact, you, you only uh, people only need a government who are unable to think critically and use discernment. But when you no, teach who everybody needs a government. To think, Nobody but, needs a government. But, yeah, we don't need a government. We have everyone Sorry, Dave. Sorry, I just really have to take this up. We don't need a government. We are my, very good at governing teacher. ourselves. It's yeah, my, my, my point is is that government's babysitters, and we're tricked into adulthood being a state of extended adolescence. If you allow me to clarify my context, I'm not in any way, shape, or form advocating government. I'm saying that we've, we've tricked into, been tricked into thinking that we have to be narrow-minded idiots, and we don't, because only narrow-minded idiots need to be governed. So we've been tricked into repressing the fullness of ourselves and tricked into thinking we're just poor little me. We're not taught critical thinking or discernment in school. We've been narrow-minded. And all we have to do is realize that we can expand our mind and then start to do that, and then we don't need babysitters because only babies need babysitters. So all I have to do is stop being babies because only babies can be subject to the mind games. Once you've grown up, guess what? You don't fall for the BS anymore. That's my point. So, the revolution of the mind. Instead of uh, revolvement, <laughs> revolvement, uh, because we, you know, the governing of the mind. We need to remove the governing. Um, we don't need governing. We just need administration. You know, it's 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 all in the words. You know, administration means you know, there's just ministering, serving the need. As opposed yeah, to janitor. control, yeah, the government is a janitor. The president is the is the chief janitor. It's in service. That's well. That's what that's what we've been led to believe. However, we've been in this thing for thousands of years, 
these systems have grown up from these places. You know, they they were in Ur in Babylon, and they were in in Rome, and then they were in Egypt, and you know, and then were in Greece. You know, they they had these systems, and they imposed them on the people. And finally, they've got one that can just about cover the whole skin of the planet. Um, but it's really ropey, and it it. it 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 relies on a massive amount of fear sticking to us, and it's yeah. like this is the worst time to try yeah. and get stuff to stick to us because we're being uh, roasted by solar activity. Yeah, you know? that's why that, that's why word magic has been um, instrumental in in the deception because you know what's what what the idea, the basic idea, or shall we say the propaganda to what we're told government is, but it isn't, as far as being a janitorial service that's, that's, that is supposed to be in service. Um, word magic has been used to twist the definitions of words and context so much, and the reason we're able to fall for this little trap is because we've been made to think that the tools are our masters instead of we being the master wielders of the tools. Like how many people say, you know, yes, my career profession is computer technician. How many people own that like that? Nobody. They say, I am a computer technician. I fit in the societally defined and labeled box of computer technician. I have to conform myself to it. I am a gender. I am an age. I am a career profession. I I am this. No, you're you're not any of these things. You possess these things. Like you own a shirt. You own pants. You own the chair you're sitting in. You own your furniture. You have possessions. These things are yours, but they don't own you. And we've been tricked into thinking that these things own us. So we try to conform to the ideal of what that is, as if it's a box we have to stuff ourselves into. And he who controls, or she in some cases, who controls the label and the definition controls all who believe in it. So we become slaves to the tools, and that's how they've caught us in the trap. That's just my perspective. So, slaves to the tool. <laughs> yeah. um, Obama is a tool, by the way. He's a major tool. Apparently, there's a, um, <laughs> there's a, there's a mole in, in a certain position. But anyway, <laughs> according to my informants. <laughs> but um, talking of tools and, and talking of the mind, uh, this is where I'm really going to, is is to bring in... Um, another level of this. Now, uh, these guys are using um, energies that are um, generated from uh, the worst of human behavior. Um, you know, of murder and, you know, putting into fear, states of fear, and they use that energy. It's like Monsters, Inc. Um, but there is plenty of natural free energy um, that doesn't have that same karma attached to it. Um, and this is where I'm getting to because this is your field, Jay Larson. Um, so the revolution will not be televised. The revolution will be internal. Where, where do people look inside of themselves and how can scalar technology help? Well, uh, basically, uh, scalar technology, uh, is, is basically quantum technology. That's, the, um, where, um, to, to put it short, bluntly and shortly, uh, it's basic, uh, understanding that we, we don't live in a time matrix. That, it's 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 all an illusion because everything is in quantum superposition, and it's what we believe is what actually happens. So basically, when we observe something, um, it, it actually condenses down and becomes solid. There's nothing really solid there to begin with. Also, refer to the double slit experiment in the documentary, What the Bleep Do We Know? 
Yeah, well, it's all it's it's all quantum illusions that we think that there's time to begin with, and basically if that's all they've done is program program us on what we should see. You know, and once you decide, well, hey, this is an illusion and it's not real, that I can have, if I, if I really concentrate on it, I can have anything I want because it's all an illusion and everything's in superposition. And all the things I have done also shall you do, and greater still than these shall you do. Jesus Christ, mm-hmm. the book of John. Uh so, <laughs> that stopped the conversation a bit. <laughs> Meanwhile, um, back in scalar technology, uh, and um, scalar waves um, are generated by creating electromagnetic waves and subtraction uh, through the configuration of the coil. The shape of the coil, uh, what it does, the, the way the coil is wound, it uh, cancels one half of the wave out, leaving the other half. Um, now, as is my wont, and I always remember, uh, I always forget the right way round, where there's two things, you know, if it's left, if it's right, you know, I've got this thing. Um, and so, I can, for instance, I can never remember which one is yin and which one is yang. I mean, really, really stupid stuff like that. Um, so, what? Uh, and, uh, and Stillings is always saying about oscillating motors. So, a scalar wave, J. Larson, is a electric only wave or a magnetic only wave. It's both. Um, you could have both. Uh, it's uh, what it is is that you're having both both <coughs> polarities being played out simultaneously. In other words, you, you, you have things happen, happening in an instant. Everything is is happening together at the same time. That's what a scalar wave is. Everything's happening at the same time. Right. In other words, you got a you got a negative charge, but you got an equal and opposite positive charge that is being generated at the same time. And occupying the same space, um, and you don't have time constraints on the energy. The energy moves at superluminal velocities, which means, which is a fancy way of saying that it is running faster than the speed of light. So presumably, it's held to the speed of light because light has a magnetic component. And this one has less of a magnetic component. Mm-hmm. So it's more slippery, uh, less sticky. Well, actually, the only thing that travels at the speed of light is light. You, um, you can basically travel over the speed of light as a solid matter. You could travel uh, over the speed of light or under the speed of light, but you can't travel in the speed of light. But you just be... A, an electromagnetic wave. So, turning ourselves into an electromagnetic wave and becoming light enables us to travel. Um, however, that's a little um, different from the topic of where, where we're going with this, um, although it does tie in, in that what we're talking about is... Again, that we live in this holographic universe. It's a, we're in a program somewhere and we're kind of stuck in the corner and we don't realize that there is a, uh, an exit door. And the exit door is, is that which we have been programmed to not look at. You know, whether it be evil or terrorists or this or that, um, this is the direction we need to be looking in. Um, and, the reason is because we need to be held in fear because that holds us in the, into the trap. Um, the fear of, well, it's like the uh, the monkey trap. Do you know the monkey trap, Dave? Uh, it's where there's a jar with something valuable in it that the monkey wants. That's right, and the, and it's well, it's, they use a coconut. Or you can put it in a jar, and uh, the monkey grabs 
puts his hand in the jar and grabs the 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 nuts and then tries to pull the uh the fist out but because the fist is bigger than the hand going in the fist won't come out of the jar and so the monkey's brain is tied between letting go of the precious gift here my little precious or <laughs> or holding on to the the prize which traps him that's the monkey trap and so basically it's uh, we need to think when we when we need to think beyond monkey mind we need to think beyond that linear i either uh, you know i have to hold on to this because this is precious this is what's killing us this is what holds us in the trap and that is money and government and the idea that we're protected by the government and all of this bs and our sacred cows and the twistings of religion and and what we're, what is supposedly polite and supposedly impolite and supposedly appropriate and supposedly inappropriate and all that goes completely against individuality and totally endorses fascism and totalitarianism while we're in denial of the fact that we're supporting fascism and totalitarianism and we're taught to defend our own individuality while simultaneously seeing everybody else's individuality as an attack. So then we're taught that we can't relate to each other and blah, 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 blah. And so we have, you know, the battle of the sexes, the battle of the religions, the battle of this, the battle of that. Oh, that person's polite and that person's rude and this person's this and this person's that. No, that person likes that TV show so they're, they they suck and I don't want to deal with them or oh, blah, 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 blah. There's all these mechanisms of division. Monkey trap. So Jay... How do we encourage people to rise above their immediate greed and need and get them to open their fist and take their hand out of the monkey trap? How, how, how do we figuratively work that one out? Well, the easiest way, first of all, that you are just yourself and, and basically what we're doing is learning how to be ourselves. And the easiest way to be yourself is by doing things for yourself. Uh, you uh, you basically uh, do things that that you enjoy doing, and basically what that does it uh, changes your focus. You're not you're not you're not work. First of all, you keep it keeping your vibration at at a more optimal, higher frequency level, and it allows you to explore things that you wouldn't normally explore. And by doing so, you nat- you'll naturally involve and become more, more yourself. And that, and then you begin getting whispers or intuition that in- that increases you becoming more yourself. And it, it's it's just a gradual, natural process. You don't really have to work at it. All you got to do. Is basically do things that you like to do, express what you like, and it's like uh, being a child again and just going out and playing and having a good time. It'll it'll cause you to focus on having joy instead of worrying about things that you don't even really need to worry about. I agree. As a matter of fact, David Ike. Um has a really good analogy for exactly what's going on because we as as little children we're we're uh, we're born being able to be ourselves and know all this and do all this so we need all this time and money and resources and all this put into this so-called educational system which is nothing more than um, Nazi propaganda entrainment camp and these mechanisms which hold us down he says to Imagine a, a, a fish tank, like, you know, a standard, like, 10-gallon tank or whatever, and it's filled up with water, and there's a, a ping-pong ball, and it's floating on the top of the water. Well, imagine if you take your hand and push that ping-pong ball down to the bottom of the tank, that is the hand of the totalitarian state. Our natural automatic state is to be ourselves naturally and be in that knowing and be in that wisdom and be in that intelligence. And if the totalitarian state lifts up its hand, even for just a moment, that ping pong ball will rise all the way back up to the surface. So being ourselves is more of a matter of allowing. Because 
we've been trained to, to build up all these emotional and psychological and core belief system walls around ourselves, which are the hand that keeps the, the ping pong ball down. Everybody thinks they have to go out and get something that they don't have to somehow learn how to be who they're supposed to be. And they're not realizing that, you know, everything is, is happening automatically. Who you are is trying to happen automatically. The universe functions automatically. Kind of like you don't have to turn a crank to keep your heart pumping. It just, you know, it just does. So it's all a matter of, of learning how to tear down the walls that we've been trained to put up so that that automatic us being ourselves thing that just automatically happens can just be allowed in, you know, break down the dam and let the water flow. So how do we, I mean, basically, it's not really, it's not really about breaking things. It's more about, I think, dissolving things so that things become integrated. That's what a solution is, isn't it? When you have a liquid and a solid, and you add the liquid to the solid, then the solid dissolves and becomes a solution. But it's all, it's, it's all language semantics again, because one, one context of a breakdown, a dissolving of a solution, is a breakdown of one thing into another. So there's truth being colored by perspective once again. Um, the easiest way to do that dissolving that, that I've learned, really the only way to do that dissolving is at your own pace and in your own way. Allow yourself that, you know, enjoyment of the journey rather than being in a mad rush to the destination. Because we're taught to be neurotic and think that, you know, if we can't plant a tree seed today and have a, a 40 foot tree tomorrow that we've done something wrong, we've done something naughty. We have all these unreasonable expectations of ourselves and we think that somebody else's pace, somebody else's way is the right way. But really our, our own pace and our own way that, that self exploration and all of it and just enjoying the environment around us, metaphorically speaking, that, that non-rushing, that observing what is for what is and taking things at our own pace is the way to do that. And to understand that people will, will operate this at, at different paces. And if someone can operate at a faster pace than you, that doesn't mean they're doing something more right than you or that you're doing something wrong or because they're better than you, because your pace will pick up as you develop the neural networks to, you know, support what you're looking to do. Biology is automatically what it is. Neurology is what it is. And as you practice, you will develop more neural networks to make things easier on yourself, just like how a baby doesn't go to school to learn how to walk. It's just kind of a process over its time. It learns how to crawl and walk and run, so on and so forth. So, you know, it's... One of the big things to to realize is just whatever your pace is, it's, it's okay. And to not compare yourself to other people. Because within this awakening process, you, you ever notice that everyone's always trying to um, compare their pace to someone else? Like, oh, they're, they're so much farther ahead. They must be doing something right that I'm not doing. I must, I must be doing something wrong. I'm not evolving fast enough. I'm not ascending into 5G fast enough or whatever silly expectations they put on themselves or comparing themselves to everybody else and beating themselves up. It's like, no, everybody's got their own path, their own way, their own pace. It's all good. Allow them to be themselves. That's individuality. Allow you to be yourself. That's individuality. If someone else's pace is faster or slower or different or whatever, it's good. It's cool. It's, it's diversity. It's Mixing it up, it's, you know, the, it's, the universe loves diversity and limited, limitless potentiality, you know, it's, it's good, it's not a bad thing, just roll with it and allow you to be you. You don't need to be the fire, just be the spark that gets the fire going and just, just, you know, flow, don't, don't fight the current. You can't push a river, but you can make it a different flavor. <laughs> Jay, how, how do we, how do we influence the, uh, the, 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 the flow factor of the time stream? 
because I really do believe it's been messed with by all these harps and uh, their Tesla technology that they've had for a long time, um, messing our heads. And, you know, whoever else's technology has been messing around with our heads. Um, how do we, as people, you know, these these devices that you're making, they're really simple, aren't they? They're, you know, uh, it's easy to find a, a design for a Caduceus coil, you whack it into an MP3 player, and boom, you've got a scalar device. Um, what other tools are available to the people for making the the flow fizzier and happier to be in? Jay? <laughs> Have we lost Jay? Muted. Muted. Um, okay. You? Okay. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say generally... The best technology is always the inner, inner technology because it's flexing. Um, but usually what we'll do, we will conceive a, of an idea and we'll, we'll make it outside ourselves first and have the tool, but that tool reflects what we can do with internally and we don't need it. But usually what we use, uh, we use an external tool for is to basically get a concept of what's going on. It, it's easier to sort out uh, uh, things like uh, what time is and uh, what parallel dimensions are when when you build a technology that helps you to sort of pierce into them. But it, it, it all comes down really to awareness because uh, we're jumping... We're jumping uh, into parallel universes all the time, and we don't even realize it because there's always a, a variance of time and things happening on an individual level as well as a collective level. Um, there is basically what you call, um, say, manifesting something is basically doing that. You create an alignment to your emotions and and your intent, and you're just jumping basically. To, to a timeline that will synchronize that, that object to, to appear, if it appears as, as a synchronistic event. So, um, we do it all the time. Now we learn to build certain machines, now like the scalar devices. Um, by themselves, uh, we're just using one, one aspect of it, using an alternating uh, scale or wave of different frequencies, just to basically experimenting to find out what they'll do. Um, but there's other factors that come in where you can actually um, create a scale or wave that is nothing more than a uh, what you would call a direct current pulse. And all of a sudden, what does that direct current pulse does? It, it acts like a sail, and you can actually ride on uh, on a, a similar scalar wave that's a, a more of an alternating way because you'll only go in one direction because you're pulsing in one direction. So it acts. The main scalar wave acts like a wind, and uh, your little pulse scalar wave acts much like like a sail, and so the wind pushes you along. And you, you, you use that basically both for time travel and also uh, 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 the um, um, trans, um, transporting yourself from one, one point to another point, much like UFOs. It, it's just... That they're just using a more advanced type of sailing than we used back in the 16 and 1700s. Some catch the wave and the wave then pushes you along. And that's what we're, that's what we're starting to learn with that, uh, some of the effects of these scalar waves and it's mostly an experiment. We lost. So on the air. Um, you still with us? I still with us. I am. I lost you. 
Yeah, I think I've got, uh, may probably lost everybody. Um, in that case, I'm going to call back. Um, yes, we're back on the air. Sorry, welcome back there. Um, something happened to our Skype. This call got completely mangled. Um, while uh, that was happening, I just got this in. And uh, so we've so far, we've got um, 3,000 truckers are planning to descend on Washington, D.C. on the 11th. Um, to protest the NDA's infinite detention without trial provision, uh, as well as to raise awareness of what they perceive as continued Obama administration support for radical Islamic factions in Egypt and Syria. Mm. Despite the near mainstream... Uh, yeah. My microphone... Dave Kelso, are you with us still? I am now. Oh, I called back in. <laughs> well, wow. um, the whole thing had dropped me off. Uh, I posted it in the chat room. Uh, but apparently, okay. you're looking there. <laughs> Welcome back to Um And ap- apparently, people are perusing my deviant art <laughs> gallery and, and posting my link. Um, and uh, you know, people who might want to follow this up. Oh, chuppy. Yeah, yeah. Um, it could be Solar Flare. Can you hear me? I'm hearing nothing. I can hear you guys perfectly. Um, and okay. One, two, three. Okay, we're back now. Yeah, we're getting dropped um, randomly at different places. I hope that I'm still on the air, um, and uh, uh, we're working towards it. I'm going to be... Uh, I'm, we're going to be taking a break in a few minutes, and... Uh, so we'll try and re- recreate the call as we do this. But there does seem to be some issue with the um, with the internet, as there was a little bit last night. Or when was, it? was it around that time? Well, that was much earlier in the evening. So we'll see how we do, and hopefully we'll we'll make it to the end of the hour, and then down to the next uh, hour we'll be discussing uh, more things. Uh, I'd like uh, if anybody would like to come in and. Um, uh, give their take on what people could do in their time. Um, if you're not, if you're coming to on 3,000 people, you know, there's 30 million, 100 million of you. Uh, what else can you do? Okay, we're having some serious dysfunctions. I keep getting nailed off. Mm. Not offline or anything, but off of this call. Off this call. Oh, I know, it's very weird. Anyway, um, I'll call you back in a couple of minutes. Uh, Here comes the break. Don't go away. We'll still be back. Yes, it's Journeys with JP tonight. Uh, It's 9 p.m. Eastern Time, Atlantic Time. And uh, what is it? 6 p.m. Pacific Time. We're talking about a trucker's march. Not really a march. Truckers convoy. <laughs> what do, what do truckers do uh, <laughs> when they get together? You know, it's like, is there a collective uh, a collective noun for truckers? Yeah. So like a murder of crows and a school of fish. So uh, my guests tonight are Jay Larson and Dave Kelso. So um, who wants to jump in with the next fragment of this uh, this large topic? <laughs> yeah, it's amazing that all these things are happening as the um, powers that were are starting to lose their money and uh, they're running out of money, basically, and they're putting stops on the government and punishing the people by these foolish acts, what they're doing with the national parks, so they're just waking up all kinds of people. And we're going to make it happen much, much quicker. Because, uh, when they, you know, when they put the screws to us, people wake up. You know, <laughs> you start to wake up out of the, out of the dream state that they have us in because, you know, they're, uh, they're trying to be, um, use punitive things. They're trying to, use these misdirections and false flags and everything, and it's starting to backfire on them big time. And now the people are, by the way, the 
they've been behaving since the, you know, the shutdown of our government. Um, they're based all these punitive acts against the people and the states. The states are starting to rebel from the from the federal government and decided to take their own course, and the people are waking up as well. And now with this Tucker thing, we're going to help uh, bring a lot of it, so to speak, to a, to a head. You know, we're going to throw the ball back in their court and we'll go see what happens. So, um, using using scalar technology, we're not actually, um, it's, like I said, we're not using the, um, uh, the intent to cause harm to anybody. In fact, it's, it's quite the opposite. It's the intention to make everybody happy, uh, which is our natural state of being. It's like the ping pong ball at the top of the, uh, floating on the top of the thing, of the water, you know, with that light. Um, so, it's really, it kind of, in, you know, like going back to that, uh, that same, uh, analogy is, is we're dissolving the hand that is holding us down, allowing us to float up, eh, Dave? Uh, uh, Jay. Oh, definitely. Uh, they don't, first of all, we're getting to a point we've had enough and we decide not to be in fear and loathing anymore. We decided to have enough, so we're and we're taking responsibility for things that are happening, so we decide to make changes. And that's why things are happening now, because everyone started to make changes, because they're tired of government. They're tired of the, all the lies and deception. In fact, government is actually helping us. They don't realize when the uh, NSA monitors everyone in the world, that the Illuminati are being monitored by them, too. So what happens when government falls and we get all those records and we can find out who uh, who criminally did this and did that, and we'll, we'll just put them away where they won't cause any more harm. You know, they're, they're producing the structures for their own end, and they don't even realize by their fear of not, um, not to know what everything we're doing, they put they're included as well, so they, they're supplying us basically with the evidence because we're their phones are being tapped like everyone else's, their emails are being read, so uh, they're 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 about to be watched by the same satellites as everyone else. So they're, they're supplying the, the means to their own end. Well, as long as um, we are on Internet radio, and as long as we're having more than just a little bit of fun at the expense of the Illuminati, <laughs> um, I am going to give you something in just a moment, JP, that is... Rather short, and we're just going to have a, a little, little bit of uh, fun with it, poking some fun at the Illuminati here. Now, where in the heck <coughs> did this go? Um, it's a, a little parody thing I made a while ago called um, A Special Message from the RIAA. I think we all know who the the RIAA is, right? Uh, no. The uh, <laughs> recording recording industry assholes. I mean, Association of uh, America, the multinational corporation pretending not to be. Oh, the you know, uh, the, the copyright claimers. Oh, they're part of the Vatican. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. On. Yeah. 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 The copyright Nazis. Um. Needless to say. I am about to slip you a link 
for an audio, it's it's very short, and I would just like to um, like like for you to play that right quick, seeing as when you play things through, it actually sounds better than if I were to do it. And then I'll provide the link in the chat room afterwards. It's real short. It's like spoofing like one of those like short little radio blurb public service announcement things, but this is just making fun of the RIAA, and and there it is. And Americans especially will be able to relate. Oh, okay. So uh-huh. really- LegalMusicSearch.com This is a public service message from the Recording Industry Assholes of America, a greedy multinational corporation. When you illegally download MP3s off the interweb, you are committing copyright infringement, which is against the law. We will find you, you criminal scum. We will have our way with your 12-year-old daughters. We'll play intern with your college student. Uh Uh-huh. We will break your disabled uncle's legs off. We will skull f*** your elderly grandmother. And as for your deceased great-grandfather, well, does the term necrophilia ring any bells for you? Yeah. And if you're really bad, we may even rape your dog and send you to the Amish. Just think about it, folks. The Amish. No phones, no cars, no lights, and certainly no computers. You won't be doing much illegal downloading then, will you, you criminal scum? So just remember, folks, give us all your money, even though we charge too much. For our inflated music prices, yes. And do not illegally download from the interwebs, because we will hunt you down and kill you. This has been a public service message from the Recording Industry Assholes of America. Um, well, I'm not sure if everybody... Uh, actually... No, that major distortion, there was major... Yeah, there was something, that, something was coming over the revolution line as if somebody was else... Uh, on the line, uh, is, is anybody dialed into the well, Studio B the thing who shouldn't be? I <laughs> should only have three people here. Um, so or did Jay, or did Jay forget to mute his microphone and maybe it was causing a feedback loop or something? No, it wasn't Jay? feedback, it wasn't feedback looping for me. I had my mic might be, um, uh, all right. the mute at the time. Well, anyway, um, Dave, if you post that into the chat room in, uh, it was... Yeah, that, that would probably be best. <laughs> Weird. I mean, your your original playback with the with the trucker thing like came out like clear as a bell. Yeah, um, but it, it just seems something's happening at studio at uh, the studio level. Um, it's like there's a speaker on the microphone or something like that. Um, I don't know why because it shouldn't be happening, but it is. Well, either e- either timeline and frequency shifts are screwing with technology, as sometimes can happen, or they're the powers who assume they be uh, do not particularly appreciate our particular brand of humor and are expressing their concerns. <laughs> well, uh, well, I I turned my scalar wave off. Uh, I had the 200 megahertz scalar wave on, and it may be causing. Uh, differences in frequency that could be interfering with C is appreciated we all do this for absolutely nothing we put in um, loads of content per week Dave is uh, schlepping his kishkas out to uh, deliver to you a uh, a high quality audio uh, radio system and uh, we have plenty of hosts and uh, uh, plenty of new and ancient information that is being uh, blended for you uh, (laughs) Uh, so to speak, to uh, um, and juice. We, we we blend we blend all that old gritty stuff, juice it and and bring it back to you. Make it interesting sounding, um, adding personal stories and uh, proceeding with the personal, psychic and spiritual evolution of humanity. Yep, and you know, JP, we mustn't forget that on WolfSpiritRadio.com, unlimited access to the archives is only five bucks a month. Only five bucks a month will give you some of the best programming material that you're likely, well, in fact, deprogramming material uh, that is likely to. 
As a matter of fact, uh, hopefully you all have a really, really good, fast Internet connection and a huge hard drive, because there is so much of it, your brain will just implode in a cosmic orgasm of consciousness when you just see how many terabytes of files that actually know, not porn, radio archives. Just how much is there? Yeah, it's it's... How can we put this? It's a, it's a sort of, um, it's, it's like the, the opposite of pornography because it, pornography draws you in and this kind of is like, <laughs> how much more of this can I take? <laughs> Cause, uh, but at the same time, it, it's food for a very special part of us that has been starved for a very, very long time. And, uh, the, I, I just am so stoked and, and, uh, unbelievably happy to be part of the movement that is bringing this information out to the people uh, and um, the other thing is that we haven't been killed yet uh, which is <laughs> yeah, really well. it's, it's always a good thing I mean I, I always kind of refer to this these sorts of things as um, kind of taking a form of spiritual fiber con because I refer to paradigm shifting as paradigm shifting and I've made several humorous graphics to that effect and so on and so forth because when you're in one mode of consciousness and then you shift to another I mean for for all of all of you who are in the chat room and if um Rochelle hasn't nodded off yet um she can also attest to conversations that her and I have had to where just one little tiny piece of information just like leads to a domino effect, just this explosion, this expansion of uh, consciousness. It's just, it, it's freaking amazing. The tiniest little piece of knowledge can change everything you know. Like, how much, like, the knowledge that the the Earth isn't flat, you know, that has that inspired so much technology. I mean, 95% of, of what we know as... Um, you know, just just normal everyday technology and knowledge wouldn't even have ever been invented if we all thought that the world was still flat and there's an edge of the earth to fall off of. So if one little tiny, tiny piece of technology, or excuse me, one tiny, tiny piece of information can profoundly change everything you ever thought you knew and your perspectives on everything, what do people think that gigs and gigs and gigs and gigs and gigs and gigs of archives from the Bull Spirit Radio archives are going to do. Take it slow. You don't want your brain to shatter. Because <laughs> it might. Yeah, well, I mean, it's um, it's quite... And it's interesting. I was uh, just listening to the show that I did with Rob Potter and Cobra the other day. And uh, one thing stuck out for me from what he said, um, which was... If you're, you just got to do what you do. You can't, I mean, all the whole, you know, whatever it is you like doing, do that because, and I understand that because that gives you, uh, it's, it's driven by love. It's not driven by fear. You know, if you think, oh, I've got to go out and earn money because I've got a massive mortgage and I've got the kids and I don't want to let everybody down and all these other things, um, then you're going to, you know that, that that's it's going to put you in a position that you hate doing, um, and that's the way of the world. And this is part of that that hatred that kind of that helps to uh, uh, oil the wheels of industry uh, on a, a black magical level, um, uh, because it's basically you know like fear and hatred is used as a as a as a fuel, um, much as much as uh, Monsters Inc did with the, the children's fear. And the neat thing about it, about these talks and stuff, they they set fire to your imagination, and you're only limited to what you can imagine. Well, that's, that's that, is, that is true. I often uh, tell people that um, you know, uh, people try to like struggle and, and turn a crank to get their imagination to work, and people don't realize. Imagination operates on its own. It's something to be observed. 
let it do its thing, kind of like you let your heart beat. Let imagination flow through you. Don't try to, to grab it by the neck and choke it. There, there's no neck to grab. You'll just be fighting with shadows. Let your Observe your imagination. It's, it's a right brain thing, not a left brain thing. When people try to calculate their imagination, they're calculating nothing based on nothing, based on assumption, based on bullshit, based on nothing. They're not getting anywhere. Just let go the imagination works on its own. Just observe it. Allow for those limitless potentials. Allow for that expansion to happen automatically. You don't have to turn a crank. Well, like you said, it's just that, like the uh, the ping pong ball analogy. It's just our natural state of being is uh, is independent and uh, sovereign and uh, and uh, essentially free to be who we are. And and it's really. I think I, I see the, the, the way of the future is a kind of combination of uh, Native American um, uh, family structures and, and, um, and attitudes towards the land. I think that, that it's very important that we have that kind of attitude because it does preserve the land many, many thousands and thousands of years longer than we've managed. You know, uh, America was kept pu- beautiful, pristine, buffalo fields, all this stuff. Uh, sweet corn, uh, and, uh, you know, in 400 years, um, these white Kazarians have come over and wrecked the place. Um, so I think, uh, we need to certainly, uh, apply a lot of the caretaking of the planet back to the attitude of, of the, uh, of the tra- traditional folk. You know, that, that, that reminds me. There's a lot of people that, that dive in into fear by blaming technology for what's happened when technology is really just a tool our technology has come from the earth and it's it's really no no difference than a beehive or a termite mound just on a higher level i mean we've taken things from the earth and we've used them and there are uses and there are misuses and you know, I remember back uh, a long time ago in the Journeys with Rebecca chat room. I, I don't know if you remember this. I know you were there at the time for this conversation. There was this person insisting that if all technology were, you know, eradicated, that, you know, the, the, the world would be at peace and that technology was the cause of all our problems. It's like, look, they didn't have video games in the Middle Ages. They did very well slaughtering each other on horseback with swords. Um, you know, technology is not this evil thing. With advanced technology, we could make technology that, that's in harmony with nature. I mean, uh, you know, look, look what Tesla did. His technology wasn't in opposition to nature. It was in harmony with nature. And then J.P. Morgan shut him down, and the uh, Illuminati stole the technology, and they've misused it and created things like HARP and whatever else. But, that, you know, that, that's been our own choice to misuse it. Technology inherently is just a tool. It's neutral. Like fire is neither good nor evil. It, it, it just is. Gunpowder is neither good nor evil. You can make pretty fireworks with it, or you can blow people up with it. That's not the fault of the of the gunpowder. That's stupid humans doing stupid things. But you know, let's stop blaming the tools because that's how we give our power away. We blame the tools. Let's take responsibility. Let's stop passing the buck. So the, uh, the, the, I mean, I'm, again, obviously, you know, this has like been my whole career is working with technology. You know, I couldn't actually do what I do now. I couldn't have done that seven years ago, five years ago. We didn't have PHP, you know, we didn't all that stuff. Well, we did, but it was in very much in infancy. Um, and now it's, it's grown up and matured and we've, we've got more and more, um, technologies that take us, into smaller and smaller things. You know, people are walking around with tiny little screens, you know. I can't even see. Well, maybe one day they'll, they'll create a pair of glasses for me that'll, uh, that'll respond to my eyes. Dude, that, wouldn't that be cool? Instead of having Google glasses where you can spy on people, how about having a pair of personal, uh, magnifying lenses <laughs> so that you could zoom into things? You know, you want to read a car number plate, you kind of, you know, the way you look at the wheel, pick up the way where your eyes are, and it will actually zoom in uh, <laughs> according to your intent. How cool would that be? That would be yeah. good. And, I, I and also and the, it would ahead. also adjust for you know reading up close. It wouldn't be a bifocal; it would just focus. 
like a like your extra eyes, pair your, of uh, eyes, enhanced uh, enhanced lenses. Your eyes used to do do that as a kid. Look at the where the lettering just magnified itself. Why you aren't larger than normal normal sight? Our eyes have that capability already. We just sort of lost it over the years. Considering most of us don't uh, are reading from a computer journal, not from a book, but back when we did a lot of book readings, our eyes had the ability to magnify the letters. And as we grow older, we kind of forget those things. But you know what uh, I find ironically amusing? What's that? People typing volumes and volumes condemning technology while using a computer on the Internet to condemn technology. That's like the ultimate irony of amusing hypocrisy. Oh, and speaking of, of technology and dealing with esoterics and stuff, one thing that people can do a search for on on YouTube, um, a person by the name of Josh Reeves did a reading of the book of Enki and, like, the the whole the whole book of Venki um, like freaking reads like Star Trek. It's it's freaking hilarious, and of course the way Josh Reeves reads it, he's just got this politically incorrect sense of humor, and he's just cracking jokes about the whole thing. And it's it's just it, it really expands the mind, and it's funny. But I swear to God, it's like you've got you've got Enki landing on Earth, and you know he whips out his little you know, frickin' uh, droid phone with the LCD screen, and he's doing stuff, and it's like, oh, my God, it's like, you know, he, he, he's got Verizon or something, you know, it's it's just hilarious the way the book of Enki is, is laid out. It's just, like, totally relatable to, to 21st century perception, whereas even 15 years ago, no one would be able to reference it. But, but you know, this day and age, you know, it, it's just easy to click it into, oh, yeah, we're talking about technology. Isn't this funny that this is coming from Sumerian records that are thousands of years old, and it's talking about frickin' LCD screens and, and files and, and, and keyboards, and it's just like, oh, my God. It's, it's, it's a pretty amazing little read, and Josh Reeves does a good job. It's called The Book of Enki. It's, it's frickin' hilarious. Is that a YouTube thing? Yes. Oh yeah, yeah. You can you can find it on on YouTube. Enki is spelled E N K I. I do believe the full title is The Lost Book of Enki. But if you just type in Book of Enki, Josh Reeves, R E E V E S, I do believe, um, you should be able to find it. It's like a multi-part like series. It's incredibly long because he does a radio show far as I know, and, like, each, like, section of, of reading was, like, one episode of the show, so, like, this happened over a period of time, so it takes about 13 hours in total to get through the whole thing, so probably not going to do it in one sitting, but it is freaking great. I mean, the way he was reading it and his sense of humor, he had me rolling on the floor cracking up, but it's uh, it's just freaking great. Jay was into it, too, I believe, didn't you? Yes, uh, and didn't he also do that book of Thor or something like that too? On his uh, yeah, the, yeah, the um, the tab, uh, Emerald Tablets of Thoth or, or or something to that effect. Um, he did that as well. The, there's supposed to be some stuff that Thoth wrote up, and they kind of um, it, it basically goes into um, it, it basically continues right after the book of Engi is what it does. Because the Book of Enki is like goes into all the, shall we say, Nibirian screw ups, if you want to, you know, put it that way, and how originally um, religions and you know the um, the secret societies and stuff were put in place to protect knowledge and slowly reveal it to mankind as mankind matures, so that they don't destroy themselves with it. But then this one guy they call Marduk, like got cocky, and then that's where, you know, you get your whole, like, you know, ancient nuclear wars and stuff. And then the Book of Anki, or excuse me, the um, the, the Thoth writings kind of take it forward, and they talk about what, you know, David Icke calls the uh, Archons, and they're known as other names, these multidimensional forces that kind of come in, and basically, you know, you could tell that they kind of, like, 
took over Marduk, just like how these entities take over these elite bloodlines, and and that's how um, that level of, of corruption started. And then these bloodlines just kind, of, you know, these infiltrations, they started infiltrating the uh, the secret societies. So they kind of had to up their security with you know the word magic and the way of phrasing, so that when you read it one way, it reads as one thing, and you read it from another perspective, it reads as another thing. And you know, there still there still are, shall we say? people of the light, for lack of a better way of saying it, that are still to the original plan of protecting and releasing the knowledge as we're ready for it, and it's just to speak, you know, just the same old pissing match between light and dark, and we're all starting to integrate and, and come together, but it it really adds a lot of perspective to the things that we already know, really, but it adds a lot more detail, and, and things like start to make sense. So it kind of validates your own knowledge. I mean, if you're already into this esoteric stuff for the people who already have studied and know quite a bit about it, then you'll listen to those two things. And besides getting a major laugh, because Josh Reeves does both of it so well, be like, ah, oh, that makes more sense, and oh, that makes more sense, ah, oh, that makes more sense. So it's really just an expansion on what we already know. It's it's a good listen. It's long, but it's it's really good. Both of them are really good. So that's that's nice. Uh, if if he's, I mean, if he's interesting, uh, nice to listen to. You know, you got. I love <laughs> for me, uh, it's Stephen Fry. You know, the guy who reads reads Harry Potter books. Um, that's that's the uh, that he's very nice to listen to uh, uh, when people are reading. You know, some people got. Uh, they get the pace right, and they get the expression of the... Uh, well, Josh Reeves is very politically incorrect, so I mean, you know, just to, just to warn you, because like, especially like with the, with the book of Enki, there's, um, shall we say, en- Enki couldn't really keep his, his lizard in his pants too well, so they were, the book is kind of describing his, um, escapades, and, you know, you got, like, Josh Reeves going, like, damn, Anki is a pimp, and let's just say, he, he gets a bit more expletive with his humor, I'm giving you the light version. So but he the, uses the F on the C word, the N word, the L word, the uh, Q word? If it exists, it's probably in there, and if it's politically incorrect and profane, it's probably definitely in there. So it's not everybody's style of, of, of humor, but for those who appreciate such things, it is freaking great. It's, you know, I, I have a YouTube channel where I got a thing called Paradigm Shift and Educational Comedy, and, like, Josh gets, like, way more crazy than I get with these things. Like, wow. So it's, you know, for those who have um, a, 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 an affinity for the George Carlin-esque sort of humor will really um, enjoy Josh Reeves. That's my opinion. Well, it uh, looks like the uh, people in the Wolf Spirit chat room would uh, quite appreciate that level of uh, humour at the moment. Uh, it does seem to be... <laughs> people are, are not behaving very well here, I have to say. <laughs> it's very funny. Uh, so, well, that's probably a good thing, though. We uh, are not supposed to behave. <laughs> we are... Built to break rules. That's what you know. This is what our job is. The, these people here listening, us people, we are here to be who we are, which means not to behave. <laughs> ah, never thought I'd hear myself saying that. Um, you know, especially the father of a, of a teenager. But um, yeah, I always like like to say that the most easy and effective way to piss absolutely everybody off is just be yourself. Because we live in such a conformist society. <laughs> All right, they're just starting to get the stuff about Enkina. <laughs> so yeah, so there's these um, these ancient texts that talk about the this stuff. Now here's the here's the thing, you know, um, when I say you know the government, this is the same thing. This is the uh, the control system that has been attempted to impose on us all throughout the ages and you know like the Roman Empire it kind of got a certain place and then it kind of petered out because it, it didn't have enough support underneath it so it collapsed um, because you can't support a lie forever you can only support it like they say you can fool some of the people all some of the time no you can find this fool yeah yeah can't fool me 
no, no. You can, you can fool some of the people all of the time, or all the people some of the time, uh, but you can't fool your mother. Um, and uh, we, um, we have so many... Uh, uh, <sighs> So many places today that the cabal is overextended, that they're just, in a way, they're kind of hoping that the whole structure survives because it's like fake it till you make it. They know that that's a rule. That's a rule of the universe. You you fake it till you make it. It's like what Jay's been talking about. And we'll, I'll bring Jay in in a minute to uh, talk about how we can we can uh, do this with the higher consciousness intention exercises and things like that. But uh, essentially, they know the rules, they know the way the universe works, and they fake it till they make it. So they fake it by scaring lots of people into thinking that they're completely in control. You know, just because they've got a camera on every street corner doesn't mean they've got anything effective to touch anybody on every street corner. You know, they say, oh, well, we've got all these drones, you know. Well, you've only got a certain number of drone pilots. They have to be highly trained. You know, how many millions of drone pilots have you got? Well, not that many, eh? Do you know what I'm saying? That there, there really aren't enough resources to control everybody if everybody misbehaved all at the same time. Yes, that's very, very true. And the worst thing is, is their own technology is is putting them in their prison, so to speak. Uh, well. The thing is, when you try to control another, the problem is you have to react to whatever they do. And in in a way, that person that you're trying to control controls you. Because if they do something, then that that causes a reaction in the ones that are trying to, to control. So they're basically being led just, just as much as the government believes that it's doing the leading, but it ain't, because it's reacting to what the people are doing. Hey, so I, just, I just found something for you guys. Um, there is a um, a graphic I, I did on my, my Facebook page that was kind of, you know, poking a bit of fun at Josh's humor about some things that was discussed in the the book of Enki, and within the description on that, I also include a link to the playlist that, you know, to where, you know, you can you can check out the book of Venki and all I'm talking about with that. So um, I'm going to post that in, in the chat room right now. So I just wanted to, you know, put that out there verbally here that I'm about to be sticking that in the, in the chat room. So anybody wants to see my little humor graphic there and get the link at the same time so that later on if they have 13 hours to kill and they want to spend the whole thing laughing and learning at the same time that um, that information is about to be available for them here. Okay, I'll go back to shutting up now. Take it away, Jay. You ever notice little kids already know that that uh, when a person's trying to control them, they're actually sending energy to them. So uh, if you ever notice, uh, when a parent is trying to control some children, the children seem to get in more fights and stuff because it draws the parents in, and they actually absorb the energy from the parents. You know, it's a type of vampirism. You know, uh, the thing is, when we become more ourselves and the government tries to control us more, they're, they're going to exhaust themselves, basically, because instead of you, you giving them power, they're going to be giving you power. It has just exactly. the opposite effect. Exactly. If you've got a tube, it can go both ways, can't it? Right. And uh, so just before you let go of things, you know, send one down. <laughs> just before you cut the cord, so, you know, tie something to the end of it. Uh, so that when it retracts, you know, it's got something to uh, to chew on at the other end. So this is basically what's happening is the people are becoming aware and they're deciding to start doing their own thing. And it's causing a disarray in government. So they try to compensate by getting more violent. 
and the more violent they get, the more disapproval they get, and the people do their own thing more. Because there's more of them to do it because the people wake up because of the behaviors of, of the government trying to control. And the more they try to control, the less control they have. That's right. When the government is harsh, the people get crafty. Mm -hmm. As Lao Tzu said 6,000 years ago, you know, haven't they learned by now? I do like the Tao Te Ching. It's one of my favorite books. Um, <laughs> so, uh, how are we doing for time? Oh, we got uh, 20 minutes out. Um, if anybody wants to call in, uh, we are available on the Wolf Spirit Radio uh, call-in n- number. Also, the Freedoms, uh, freedom screen, uh, actually I don't know if there's a Studio B freedom screen or, uh, whether it's, uh, it's that, but it, you can definitely get in through Skype on wolfspirit.switchboard, uh, and 17756575973, or indeed, let's see, uh, no, how do I do it? Did I go last week? Yes. Ah, got it, yeah, okay. Um, Eric code 310-421-4053 is the Studio B specialized call-in line and uh, you can uh, call in straight into this conversation and join us uh, we're talking about what is going on on the weekend really which is the beginning of I think this is definitely a beginning of the turning back the time when the tide turns when it's suddenly you know instead, like you were saying Jay earlier uh, about if you're trying to control people, you're sending energy their way. You're, you know, you're, uh, oppressing means that you're pressing. So it takes a lot of energy to do that. And at some point, the source of your energy has to dry out. It's a natural law. And so when that does happen, then whatever you're trying to push, i.e., if you're trying to hold the ping pong ball down at the bottom of the fish tank, uh, it's, your your strength will eventually go and the the ping pong ball will naturally rise and that which naturally would have happened anyway starts to happen anyway and the whole thing snowballs and and um the the system of control becomes a thing of the past mm. that's the theory isn't it yeah and you have all these power addicts up there with no fix yeah. Call in now, 1-900 Journeys, Adult Consciousnesses Only. (laughs) (laughs) New Age porn, dude. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, come and have a text with with an enlightened being. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, joy porn. You want to be an enlightened being here? I'll stick a flashlight in your ear. Ooh. Meanwhile, <laughs> at the, meanwhile, back at the back gate. Is it time? Na, 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 na. <laughs> <laughs> no, maybe we don't. Um, meanwhile, <laughs> yes. I said, I said, Joy's talking about the wolf. Uh, swallowed the grandma hole. <laughs> And a hungry like a wolf. Da, 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 da. So, yes. yes, meanwhile, back at the Wolf Spirit Radio and uh, Revolution Radio, we've got 20 minutes to kind of sum this up uh, and um, also uh, to, to ask for um, people's ideas, uh, you know, in the chat room or anybody who wants to call in, um, about other ways uh of being disobedient this weekend we know we've got the um united we strike we've been doing this we were involved for a wee while uh and it's been building up for three years 15th of the month every month disobedience um don't lie don't comply (laughs) why and all this business so Uh, yeah yeah so nobody nobody. the 12th the 13th uh, that's the weekend, and then <laughs> Monday, and then Tuesday. So it'll be next Tuesday. It'll be the fifteenth. Beware the Ides of October. What do you think, Dave? Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I think I think maybe that I've noticed that you know usually when I'm on the radio, it's like nobody wants to pitch any questions because I think the amount of talking I already do scares them enough. They don't want to encourage me to do more, you know. 
<laughs> There's never any questions. <laughs> that, that that that. <laughs> it's like, come on, it's hard enough to get Dave to shut up. We don't want to encourage him to keep going. <laughs> See, they only got the 17th until they they got to pay their bills, the government or default. So they're they're having problems, and this trucker thing may cause uh, what you would call the event a lot sooner. The biker videos were awesome. The trucks are going to be even more awesome. But has anybody seen the biker videos? Like. You know, like 55 miles of nonstop, you know, motor biking, you know, between two and four lanes of just motorcycles, 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 on and on forever. That video is awesome. There's tons of it out there. It's like, wow. Unprecedented. Nobody seen it? Yeah. It's, you have? It, I've, uh, I saw uh, some of the biker videos. Now, wouldn't it be nice if the truckers were to arrive on Friday and the bikers arrive Saturday and, you know, <laughs> micro light flyers arrive on Sunday and, you know, uh, you know, people well, just come and, and show up in whatever, yeah. whatever means of transport they do. Wouldn't it be nice if the teleporters could come in and the, and the people in the round vehicles who, uh, who were, uh, you know, um, mind controlled? They suddenly wake up and realize who they're, they're humans, and they're they're flying these UFO triangles and come and land a couple on the on the on the Capitol building. Uh, yeah, maybe. Me, maybe. me and Jay were joking around about how after trucks it's going to be Cessnas <laughs> flyovers of DC. <laughs> oh, what you could do uh, if there's any mutant. Uh, music capable people, you may want to go, go there and create a block party right out at one of the, uh, parks or whatever and, and give it a real carnival atmosphere. They won't know what to do about it. Hey, how about set up a block party on every block in DC? <laughs> I mean, yeah. what would they do, you know? That yeah, that's be, it. I mean, it has to be, be a loving the, party atmosphere. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, Dave, I, I spoke over you. It has to be a right. loving party atmosphere, doesn't it? Right. Yeah, there are, there, are, there are cops to beat the crap out of everybody. you, you got to make it joyous and fun. You know, it's, it's the new form of play. We're going to play in that as we play the... Their realities go collapse underneath them because they're taking everything so seriously, and there's nothing really serious. That's right. That's gravity, and gravity mm-hmm. is just so oh mm-hmm. six six ray age. <laughs> gravity is <laughs> so so last year. My God, the chat room! It's like little red Buffy Hood, the Wolf Slayer. It's like what the hell are you people talking about? <laughs> Then she cut off his head, and the wolf, Grandma, and Little Red Riding Hood decided to form a non-hierarchical alternative community. What the heck are people smoking, and why aren't they sharing? Of course, that, 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 then again, you could, ma- you could make it a national picnic day, and everyone take a picnic basket and go out there and have a good time. Uh, maybe a little bit of a lizard roast. <laughs> Here, lizard, 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 drop the chalupa. Uh, <laughs> it's like that. chicken, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, so, so does rattlesnake. Um, you could you could buy a box of Dunkin' Donuts and go out and tease the cops. Yeah, I saw that. That was so funny. Was it the Spanish? Uh, Spanish protesters, and they yeah. had a little fish in a hole, a bit of string, and a donut. Yeah. That was so funny. That, I mean, that is the level of humor that you need to, to work this with. You know, yeah. it's just totally humiliating. It's smells like, like, smells like Monica, tastes like Obama? What? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, it's, um, it's kind of along the lines of you, you know you got to stand it's not about um it's not about the emotion you have to stand in the truth of what uh, you know so so that you stand over the lie uh mm-hmm. you know the, the the truth 
it's, it's just so self-evident. It gives the lie the perspective. And the yeah, lie well, is the conflict. It, and there's a well, there's unity in, yeah, our, in all that. If you, if, you, if you stand in the truth, truth and make sure you wipe off your feet first before you walk into the White House... Oh, we, we, could always have, we could have a clothing drive to get Obama some clothes because he's trying to be the emperor with no clothes. Oh, my goodness. Rochelle woke up. I, and she finally said something. I thought she'd fallen asleep or something. <laughs> must must be your um, calming tone, Dave. Yes. Must be. <laughs> <laughs> or, may, or maybe it was your Sean Connery thing that you've got going on. Yes. But to, but, but to not, as, not as strong of an inflection. You, you are feeling sleepy, my dear. Sleepy. <laughs> well, it, it, I'm getting heavy. The trucker's uh, like reminds me of that old trucker song about with the CB and all that, where... I remember it well. <laughs> yeah. It's like we've got ourselves a convoy. I, right. used, I used to know all of that, you know. Uh, hey, there's a big fan. You got the copy on me, ten four rods. You know all this stuff. I remember. Yeah, you know, I used to do all that CD stuff. Oh yeah. Right. So, so instead of calling me dragon in your own tongue, you call me dragon in someone else's tongue. Mm -hmm. For anybody who's seen that movie. Mm. <laughs> No. <laughs> no? No, sorry. Well, 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 what was the name of that movie, the one where Sean Connery plays the talking dragon? What the heck was that freaking... No. no. Oh, what was Not it? Not the never-ending no. story, is it? No, no, That's no, no. That's a different dragon. No, no, different dragon. Oh, well, never mind. Very different dragon. Never mind. So, somebody will remember it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that was the luck dragon. <laughs> A lovely furry dragon who helps. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Stops the magnet's dragon, scrapes across the floor. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> no purple jokes for that. <laughs> oh, hey, that's what we need to do is to make a trucker song for these people, for these truckers going to Washington D.C. Oh, oh! You know how you know how you make them make them honk. That's easy. You put up a sign that says "Honk if you hate Obama." It'll just be blaring nonstop horns. <laughs> Although we have to remember, it's not Obama that's the problem; it's the government itself. And, and it's not bank. even the, it's not even the government itself. It's the controlling hand above that that we, in our complacency, have given permission for them to bend us over and screw us in the butt. Well, I think I think they built us to be screwed <laughs> and over and screwed, really. Oh, <laughs> well, it's a it's a it's a chicken and the egg sort of paradox. We 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 give them permission to uh, do it against our will. It's a little bit of a contradiction, but when you kind of look at it in like a circular meme that self-perpetuates, then you see that even the Illuminatis themselves are caught in their own mind prison. I mean, they were raised from, from little kids to hate us, and, you know, I mean... If they, they were born in some other type of life, if they were born as one of us, then they wouldn't have the perspective of an Illuminati. But, you know, it's just, it's perpetuated. It's a strict meme. And it, they're probably more abused than anyone else. Well, that's exactly it. You know, like I say, people share their feelings, and um, they've been more abused than we can imagine. Oh, yeah. yeah. What they do on, on you know... Uh, the abuse that they give out on on a large scale is what they, well, they they've experienced themselves on a small scale, over and over and over again, unbelievably number of times. So, you know, it's it's a uh, it's a fine line. You know, there has to be the truth and reconciliation in this, um, in that we have to uh, not be angry and rip them to shreds in the streets or anything like that, but to just Put them out of the way and just uh, reduce the government to uh, administration. Um, Decriminalize everything that's been criminalized and start um, selling Marlboro Straits or, you know. <laughs> and one thing I've noticed. Marlboro Blunt. It's, it's ironic, mm. but when you give yourself 
full permission to be angry, then you quickly are no longer angry. It, it, it's the negative feedback loop that perpetuates because then we're starting to feel angry about feeling angry. And like with every, every turn of the circle, the pressure heightens and it gets worse. It's like we feel guilty about, about feeling guilty and sad about feeling sad. We see our emotions as this external monster that we can't control that's, that's coming to get us that we have to fight. But we can't change what we don't own. So when we own our own emotions, then all of a sudden, you know, we can decide. You know, it's as simple as making any other decision. Like, oh, look, I'm eating a shit burger. I don't like that. I'm going to go eat some chicken instead. But if we see it as victimizing us, it's like, oh, the shit burger is victimizing me and forcing me to eat it. I, I can't stop. Oh, woe is me. I'm in such victimization. If we just take ownership of our emotions and know that it's okay to feel angry, it's okay to feel sad, it's okay to feel all these negative emotions. Little kids know that it's okay to feel it. Look how quickly they get through it. They don't cycle in it. They learn as they get older how to how to abuse themselves and cycle in it. They don't do that normally and naturally. They're mad for a little while. They give themselves permission to feel it. They know it's okay, and so they get over it. And before you know it, they're romping around happy and laughing again. But us, we cycle and we cycle and we cycle and judge ourselves for judging and hate ourselves for hating and all this and that. And Misery just becomes our only reality. It's this negative feedback loop. Own your emotions instead of seeing them as something external to you and victimizing you, and you'll just be able to work through this stuff a lot faster. Just my perspective from my own experiences. I'm not trying to tell anyone what to do. I'm really just reiterating what I have personally gone through. Jay Lost and Dave Kelso, thank you very much for joining me on tonight's Journeys with JP. Well, Good thank luck you. With those guys on on Friday, and uh, well, we'll see what happens next Monday. Yes, we will. See you next week. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye.